Well, good morning, everybody. It is the 24th today. No, 25th. 25th of May, 2022. And I'm coming to you from Valdosta, Georgia. And you probably have noticed that I have a new audio system. And I want you to let me know how it sounds, if it's clear, which I've done a couple of videos and it seems really clear. It might be actually too clear, I don't know. But what I switched over to, I'll try to make a long story short. I had just a regular microphone, wired microphone, which was good. That's what I used on a lot of my, pretty much all my videos. But it got caught up in my suicide knob when I was turning into a facility a couple weeks ago and I was like, God, I'm done with this. So I went and bought a, it's a transceiver and a receiver, um, wireless or two boxes. So they kind of work together type of thing. And uh, I tried that, but it was all crackly. I, it, it works off of UHF and had like 50 channels, different channels. I tried almost all the channels. I'm like, it's not changing. So there was a lot of interference, I guess, coming from my truck or something. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, I have a GoPro Hero 8 Black. And I'm like, this thing has Wi-Fi on it. There's got to be something I can use or connect to this or somehow turn into Wi-Fi so I can just talk through my headset. Well, don't know why, but I'm... I wasn't finding anything I'm like this is just ridiculous so somehow I came across a, just a website or something or just not a website really but just kind of like a article on this new app well it's not new it's been around since 2016 but new to me so it's called uh, MYK which stands for they, Mike that's how they call it MYK that's how they say it or spell it that way so anyways, it's an app that basically what it does, it connects through Wi-Fi to my GoPro, which I have mounted on the windshield. I can have it anywhere. And it works through my headset, Wi-Fi through my phone, and it mixes the audio and video together. So it's kind of cool. So I'm wireless, and that's why it's so clear because my headset has noise canceling. So it, that's why it probably sounds so clear. Now the GoPro, which is nice about the, the mic app, is that it has an option to blend in your noise, or should I say your noise, any uh, noise that's around the camera, which is like your engine sound and stuff like that. So it has a way that I can blend that in, like slide in some extra noise from the camera on top of my voice now I'm far enough away hopefully it won't have an echo when I was doing it at home testing it out it was kind of like you could hear an echo because the camera was like a split second off of my audio through my microphone through my headset so I'm gonna try it out this is my first video on the road with it uh, it's also kind of cool it's got these different I guess it's called telegraphy stuff so it has like a speedometer, which you can see there. I'm using the bottom right corner. Uh, it also has uh, it has different things. What do I have on this? I can't see it's so small on my phone, but I guess it has time also. I think time and date, or maybe just the date. But I could put different things on there. I thought I'd try that with just a little bit of a uh, little bit of the telegraphy stuff they call it uh, with the speedometer on there. So kind of a little different, and that's through the app too. So. Now, the only guess downside is everything does get recorded to my SD card in my camera, but that doesn't have the audio from my headset. That's through the app. So the app, then what you do is when you do your filming, before you, well, before you take this SD card, just put my computer, upload it, do my videos, ed, do my video editing through my computer. Well, this one's a little different now. So now everything's being recorded through the app on my phone then I have to take that uh, mp4 off my phone let it up well it's automatically being uploaded to iCloud 
Then I got to go to my computer at home. Instead of just plugging in the SD card, I have to then go to my iCloud, pull the MP4 from that, let it upload into my computer, and then move it into the editing software. So we're going to see how this works. I mean, I, I did a couple at home, but not over the road like I normally do, which I might have like 10 to 15 different video clips at times that I have to move over. So I, before I just, they'd all populate right away from the SD card as soon as I put in the computer. This might take extra time, but to me, the audio is better. It almost sounds like it's funny. When I was doing a couple of videos at home and upload them, it almost looks like I'm talking after I'm doing the video. That's how deadening the sound is around my microphone because my headset microphone just cancels out all wind noise and everything. So it might sound that way, but that's not the case. It's actually live right now. I'm actually driving, I'm actually talking while I'm driving, so it's not added in later. So again, I'm going to work with uh, the slider that has some GoPro sounds, so hopefully that will uh, be able to mix in some of the sounds that we were getting before, because I did like that, but I didn't like the fact of getting all wrapped up with a cord on my steering wheel. It's dangerous, so I had to find a way to stop this. So in any case, folks, so I didn't say this, but we are headed to Noonan, Georgia to go to Kellogg's, picking up a load, heading on down to um, uh, Lakeland, Florida for a 7 a.m. delivery tomorrow. So I had my son's graduation last night. That ended basically, I don't know what time it really ended, but I didn't get back to my house until about 9.45. Had to wait for him and his friends to show up at our house to have cake and everything. So I didn't get over to my truck till about 10.30, quarter of 11 last night had to get up at uh, 3 o'clock this morning to start driving to be able to get up here, uh, get my load, and then have it delivering after my 10-hour break. I got to do a 10-hour break once I pick it up to get back down to Lakeland, Florida by, by 7 a.m. delivery. So it's, it's a big rush here to try to get this load there. Um, I'll explain more later in this video or another video. Uh, we have a new uh, driver manager for Kellogg, so I know I expressed it before in the previous video with Kellogg's having so many problems. Well, they seem to fix about 80 to 90 percent of their their situation they're having. So hopefully now it's going to be smooth sailing. We'll see. I mean, this uh, new guy that we have on our side with Knight, he seems on the ball. He seems right on top of everything, unlike the last driver manager I had for the past month and a half. He just didn't seem to care about Kellogg's and uh, it was just horrible. So anyway, so I hope everybody's having a good day and I'm going to cut off this clip now. We're running about eight and a half minutes now on this clip. So I'm going to stop this, upload it so I can listen to it, make sure it sounds okay and everything's coming out okay. And then um, we'll go from there. Because if it doesn't sound good, it's just a waste of my time right now. But if it does sound good, you guys are hearing it now, right now. So, all right, folks, I will catch up with you in a little bit. I'm going to stop for a break, my half-hour break, uh, in about 73 miles. Um, and then I also have to get a light bulb because my right front headlight is burned out. It was good on my pre-trip. But as soon as I left the yard, I noticed it seemed a little dark. And come to find out, headlights blown. So I'm gonna pick up a headlight, put that in, do my break, and I'll be back in a little bit. So we'll all see y'all soon. Again, let me know in the comments what you think of this audio. Is it too much coming from me and not enough truck? Um, should I blend more? Should I go back to a wireless mic? Let me know. So I need your input, folks. So I will talk to y'all soon. All right. So we're up here in uh, Cordell, Georgia. We're going to stop and do our 30-minute break here at this uh, Love's up here. Uh, going to stop. I always stop at this Cordell anyways, but uh, I definitely got to stop here because I don't know if I mentioned earlier in this video. Uh, did a pre-trip this morning, and I got a... Um, well, I did the pre-trip and I had a headlight working, but it went out when I started out of the gate this morning out of our yard. So 
I gotta stop here and get a right front headlight. Put that in, because I'll be driving all night through the night tonight to get into Sam's Club by 7 a.m. So I'm gonna have to leave uh, probably about 11 o'clock tonight to be able to make it in. So I'm gonna just stop here and get a headlight, put it in, do my break. Just, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do it all at the same time and then uh, continue on to Noonan, Georgia. So I'm just going to get off here in a half a mile. So again, like I always say, I hope everybody's having a good day. And uh, if you like the channel or are new to the channel, please smash that subscribe button in the bottom right corner. And then also click on the bell that alerts you of any future videos that I put out, which I will be. And this is our exit right here, so I just had to get around that truck that was coming on. I'm debating on staying here tonight. Just gotta look at my hours when I get up to uh, Kellogg's and see. It just depends how much time it's gonna take to get paperwork and everything and change over from this trailer to their trailer I gotta see what my time's gonna be when I pull out of there is it better for me to stay there or drive to Cordell I mean you might think well you're getting closer driving two and a half hours from Kellogg's to Cordell here to this loves but it just all depends on when you're actually shutting down to do your 10 hour break that's what it comes down to so I'll have to recheck my hours when I get to uh get all hooked up at, at uh, Kellogg's all right come on uh, another truck coming gotta wait you guys can't see this another truck coming to my left and one to the right now I don't know if he is going on to 75 or what is he doing yeah, he's going straight I guess My broom in the back always falls every time I make a left hand turn. There's a couple trucks parked where I wanted to park, but I guess. Now they're parked on the fence, I think. Can't tell from this distance. Well, I'm going to park up here by the garage anyways, just back it in because i got to put the headlight in. So normally I just go through the fuel pump, the fuel fuel island, and just park because they do have an area there you can just kind of park. But I'm just going to pull over in front of the garage and walk in and get a bulb. There's some room over here. What are you doing, dude? Uh, he's gonna he's gonna park there in this first spot. Set, turn my clock off. There's a couple spots over here next to the USA truck. Looks like I'll just pull in there when he's done here. Let's back her in. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go right here. Do the same thing he did. Just back up right here. This guy's working on his truck. I don't know if you guys can see there or not. He's working. I'm just going slow because there's a guy walking back here. I'm just kind of blindsided here a little bit, so I'm just kind of going as slow as possible. There we go. Now I can see my 
Line on the left side. All right, buddy. So I'll be back. I'm just going to go and pop a headlight in. Do my break. And I'll be back. All right, folks. See you in a little bit. All right, so we left uh, the Cordell Loves, found the last pack of headlights. So it's kind of weird. They had like three, you know, sections for blister packs of the H11 uh, halogen uh, light bulbs that I needed. And I was like, well, what the heck? What am I going to do? Because I'm like, maybe there's a shortage on those, like everything else. So found a two-pack um, the bulbs are like 30 bucks a piece it looks like normally but I got two for the price it was on sale two for forty dollars and ninety nine cents so I'm like okay company pays for it so I'm like no big deal I need a headlight regardless so uh, put the headlight in on it took a couple minutes no big deal it just kind of pop out and uh, did my break so we're about it says 21 miles from uh, Kellogg's here so it's like rain and I kind of figured out just mentally just driving trying to figure out looking at time and all that I'm probably gonna have to stay here because it's not a fact of I don't have the time to drive meaning time on my clock it's the time of just the daily time so I'll try to explain it this way so I need every minute of eight hours technically eight and a half hours to get in by seven o'clock a.m. so let's say I'm getting it there like 12 30 that's what it says so if my clock shuts down then then I can start 10 hours later at 10 30 tonight and start driving okay so that's six seven eight that's exactly eight and a half hours so maybe because it's the middle of the night hopefully I'll get there faster no traffic blah blah hopefully now if I decide to drive to Cordell which is on the way it takes two and a half hours to get there let's say I'm sitting at Kellogg's for 45 minutes to an hour waiting for paperwork so that leaves me starting out at 1 30 and then not getting in until what uh, four o'clock and then my 10 hour break won't start till two in the morning and that only gave me five hours when I need five and a half so the time just sitting here and then restarting the clock then does another restart of my 10-hour break when I have to drive after that so so that makes any sense I'm gonna have to stay at Kellogg's looks like to get every minute I can get because what happens is and I, and I a lot of us hate this too but they're really strict about their time so when you're scheduled for a time you got to be there if you're a minute late they won't take you and it's kind of upsetting but long and short of it that's the rules that's the deal so I gotta make sure I, I use every minute uh, broom fell again gotta figure that out so I gotta figure every minute every second to uh, try to get this load there so any case so we're in uh, Spalding Georgia on Route 16, State Route 16. So I'll catch back up when we get to Kellogg. We'll do a little filming there on the yard. Oh, I'm going to probably hat cam I had before. I don't know. I have different hats that I can use, but for some reason, I'm just not getting the best view. I remember buying in the past a strap that goes on my head, so it straps on my head. And that might be a better solution because it does put the camera. I think what's happened before the camera was more forward, closer to the. Oh, you guys can't see us. I'm, I'm sitting here touching it. My uh, headliner. So I think with me using the clip, I'm not clipping on a visor, which puts it closer to the headliner. It's closer to me because it's just a strap that goes around my forehead. So maybe that might work better. Um, 
So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to find it. I think it's in my truck somewhere here. So I'm going to try to look for that uh, when I go on my break here, or my you know my 10-hour break for the night. And I'll try to put that on so tomorrow uh, we'll see how that turns out. So I, I mean, a lot of you commented about the last view I had, which is up on my sun visor. But where my pre-pass, which is like a electronic pass to go through toll boost and everything, when they put that on the windshield, they must have smeared some super glue or something like that, some, some adhesive stuff. And the camera's always in the way of that, so it just looks like something's on the windshield. Just it kind of it's in the camera view. So I haven't really liked that. Um, it's really hard to scrape off, too. So I don't want to go put scratches in the windshield. Then it's useless because then I'm making marks in the windshield. You're going to see through razor cuts in the windshield. So in any case, uh, cause I'm going to try to find that strap. And then uh, hopefully tomorrow I can, I can use that strap and and see hey see if that's better. So it might be in this video, it might be in the next video, it might not be any video because maybe I can't find it. So, but just look out for that. And uh, so we'll go from there. So we've got about 17 miles to go until uh, I'm at Kellogg's. Got two more roundabouts, and we'll be there. And then uh, we'll go from there. So we'll see you soon. All right, we're just about here at Kellogg's, and to the right here, it looks like they're going to be, I don't know what they're building here. I thought I saw something about apartments, but I don't know. In any case, something's going on there, they're building something. Yeah, it doesn't say. I thought that sign back there said before something about apartments, but it doesn't. In any case, we're Kellogg's here, and uh, I'll park here in the the center aisle or center lane here. Park here, just to our left, right here. When I come out here, stay here for the night, and uh, leave at 10:30 tonight to get in by seven o'clock tomorrow in Lakeland, Florida. So, come on, Millis, what you doing here? I thought he was blocking the way there. He's not. Like he was. All right, so I'll check in and uh, we'll go from there. We'll see if the air brakes show up here on this uh, headset. Alright, be right back, folks. Alright, so we gotta put this trailer in the back at uh, spot 375. And they say my trailer is right here. Oh no, it's truck, uh, spot 120, it said to pick up. So it's gonna be drop off the empty in 375, and then 120, which is down here in the left. Is my uh, pickup spot. So let's see, 120 is right after this truck here. There she is. 85890. Tires don't look flat, which is a good sign. Now, a lot of times they give you a spot to drop this and it's it's got a trailer in it so talk to the yard guys they said just put it anywhere anywhere it's not a dock door so still looks like it's gonna rain i kind of hope it doesn't rain because then it keeps the temperature up so that my ec stays on because these trucks shut off at 68 degrees on the outside air temperature is 68 it shuts off and believe it or not, it might be cool enough for most people, but when you're in a truck, it gets beaten on by sun and just heat from the outside. It's like an oven in here. So, uh, let's see, 375. 
See somebody's in it right there. So I'll swing her around here. I'm putting that hole. You know what? I'm just putting 379 right there. Spin her around here. This is where I like the hack cam because then you guys can see me putting this thing in the hole, but we gotta try to find it. Alright, so basically I just go two past, two trailer past, do my start to do my setup. It's different for every situation, depends on how much room you have here. So I'll have to go over that a different time. They said, I wish I had my hat can. Pull forward a little bit to get a different angle. You don't need to pull forward too much get the angle you need all right so we got her in a hole here straighten her out and then unhook her all right so I'm gonna disconnect here real quick I'll be right back All right, so now we're gonna go up to the trailer in the front and then park for the night. Well, actually not park for the night. What am I talking about? Park for the afternoon and early evening because I'll be leaving at about 10.30 tonight. I don't like doing this, but it's all I had right now. Well, I should say, well, it's, he has more, there's more loads here. That's all he had to deliver uh, on time. It needed to be done on time. Eight, five, eight, nine, zero, right there in the right. Let's hope everything works on this. Lights and tires are good. We'll find out here in a minute. Looks a little high. Let's crank it down a little bit. Let's see if it clicks in there all the way. Come on. Gotta look at it real quick. Alright, she's good. Just go up and connect to her now. What's nice about this too is I can walk around a truck. You guys can still hear me. Just can't see me until I get the hat cam set up right. Come on. There she goes. You gotta be really careful with these because you can slam these trailers. If you go too fast into them, slam them. All right, let's get out of here and check out the guard gate and park.
Getting a lot better here at Kellogg's. Used to be really crowded and oh man, you'd wait forever at the shipping office, which maybe you still might, but it's uh it's been good the last three times. Only had like one or two people in front of me this time was just one. I think the last time was just one. So it's not too bad. Hope it stays that way. So what the guard check does here, they release the they take your paperwork, they release the load from their yard, and then they uh check the seal to make sure the seal is correct on the back. There's a seal that can't be broken the entire trip. That just shows that the load is secure and not tampered with. So the seal has to match when you get to the consignee. There you go. Oh, there's one more in the bottom. Yep, there you go. Okay, so that can pull up You got it. You too, thank you. That pull up so she can check the seal. Now it's starting to get busy here. All right, so let's go now and park out here, and I'll set the tandems. They're back a little bit, but uh, I want to set them all the way forward because the show's only it's. Uh, 14,408 pounds. So that's light. Another driver said it's been starting to get busy out here for parking, but looks like I'll be okay now. I'm just going to pull up in the very front of this guy here. guy behind me looks a little upset. Just going to pull forward a little more and then just back her up a little bit just to straighten her out here. Alright buddy, well this will end this video from Lakeland to Kellogg's. Tomorrow I'll pick up the video on our way down. Not Filming at nighttime because you can't really see it at nighttime, but I'll I'll film it once I get once it's light outside and get into uh, Lakeland where Sam's is, and uh, we'll film at that point and uh, go from there. So hope everybody's a good night, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, folks.